Wendy, I'm the founder of Mint. I'm joined again by Zoe. Today we're going to be talking about supplementation and how it can benefit your health and lifestyle. Good morning, Dee. I was so impressed to have a look at your supplement line. And I was just wondering what actually inspired you to, um, to create these one, this wonderful line of supplements and powders. Yeah, sure. I mean, I guess I, like most people, um, have a story when it comes to my dietary choices and relationship with food, including supplementation. So I've been plant-based for more than 25 years. And prior to starting my company, Mint, I worked as a private chef, which involved a lot of global travel. And there's a real misconception that chefs must eat well, simply because we're constantly surrounded by food. But I guess the reality actually meant working up to 18 hours a day, often for weeks at a time, no days off, and not really being able to sit down and enjoy a meal. So in that time, I was diagnosed with breast cancer at the age of 30. And even though I thought I was being quite conscious of what I was consuming through food, um, beauty products and so on, I actually had an overwhelming realisation that I really wasn't actually looking after myself. Once I returned to my chef career, which I was so excited about, I mean, I literally couldn't wait to get my life back after cancer, but I really had to think about and make conscious decisions to not slip back into letting life just dictate what I was going to consume or how I was going to live. Um, I wasn't willing to give up my job because I loved what I was doing, so I just had to adapt. I've never really been huge on breakfast, like a lot of other people. I can't stomach eating first thing. And so I started making green smoothies for myself other chefs I was working alongside um, as a way to nourish myself with something that was full of nutrients, but was easy, quick to throw together, not too much weighing, measuring and the like, um, in between trying to cook meals for other people. And it actually made such a huge difference in how I felt, the energy levels I had. So it felt like the perfect way for me personally to replace a meal that I would usually just skip past and then end up having, you know, lots and lots of cups of tea instead. Obviously, during the time I'd been undergoing chemo, I started looking into my nutritional needs a bit more. So I went through long periods during my treatment where I couldn't actually cook for myself sometimes because the smell of hot food, for example, was like completely unbearable. So that many of my meals ended up being cold um, or raw. And I also started juicing a lot more. I a couple of times actually lost my taste buds as well. And everything just tasted really metallic. So this actually massively reduced any cravings I had. And I also lost a lot of weight, which obviously is detrimental to a cancer patient. Um, never mind the fact that it was utterly heartbreaking as a chef to go from cooking for so many people and really loving my job to not even be able to taste my own food properly. And so I think where supplementation is concerned then, we can't assume that every single person is able to provide their bodies with the recommended five a day or consume three full meals a day. Life just doesn't really work that way. Um, we've all got completely different lifestyles, different nutritional needs, and sometimes overriding factors that may temporarily affect our diets. So I guess to answer your question, it was really a combination of my own story and strive for health that sparked the idea for me to launch my own range of powders and supplements. Wow, Dee, that's amazing. I'm so impressed um, just with your attention to detail. Um, I love the aesthetics of the packaging. I think that just works so perfectly because if anything like me, I've got a drawer full or a cabinet full of supplements that take up way too much room. And I just think everything from the aesthetics to the fact that it's um, plant-based, you know, you have options for dairy-free, so many people are gluten intolerant, so your gluten-free um, options. 
um, the some organic lines and also the fact that there's no you know none of the fillers and binders that we find in a lot of the supplements when you read through the ingredient list so um, well done looking at um, being so diligent with the uh, with all of that it's uh, it's a fantastic line thank you Zari so as a nutritionist um, you obviously work with clients all the time to discuss their diet to have a look at their lifestyle factors and anything that you know, um, impacts on their health, I guess. What would your advice be and what would you recommend when it comes to supplements and powders? Okay, well, first of all, yes, you're absolutely right. I uh, recommend all the time certain supplements for clients with certain health conditions. Um, the first thing to always remember is to, um, just like taking a drug, um, a supplement is no different, whether it's a vitamin, a mineral, always check with your medical doctor, particularly if you have a chronic health condition that's been diagnosed or you're on certain medication, because we know definitely that uh, taking certain vitamins or taking certain minerals can, um, can definitely be um, sometimes dangerous. So you always want to absolutely check, this is what I'm want to supplement with is this okay that's the first thing um the second thing i would say is in terms of vitamin supplementation and mineral supplementation um just supplement for deficiency so identify that you have a deficiency so when i uh, work as with clients i send people a um, it's called a nutritional deficiency questionnaire and it goes through absolutely every single vitamin and mineral and identifies symptoms of deficiency. So it's not just because people generally don't, don't spend money on blood work um, because that can be really expensive. But, you know, it's amazing how I will see somebody's uh, diagnosis and I will look at their nutrient deficiency and I'm like, oh, yes, you can see that pattern. So always uh, look what you're likely to be deficient in and don't over supplement, especially for fat soluble vitamins. So vitamin A, vitamin D, uh, vitamin E. Um, we need to be careful how much of those we take because we're not going to necessarily eliminate them. So things like vitamin C, we can you know, maybe overdose on a little bit more. Um, even the B vitamins, a lot of people think, oh, well, they're fine because they're water soluble. But something like vitamin B6, again, if we're taking multiple vitamins, we have to be careful we're not exceeding those uh, recommended daily allowances because we can get, um, particularly B6, you can get um, tingling in your hands or like a type of neuropathy almost, um, which can be permanent. So, you know, we do have to be careful. Um, so we're not doubling up basically <laughs> with our um, key vitamins. And obviously trying, if it's a herb, trying to make, uh, sure that it is organic if possible um, because again you're generally taking a therapeutic dose of something that wouldn't normally be in your diet and you want to make sure that it's fairly pure obviously <laughs> so that's key um, and also to identify why am I why am I supplementing is it for um, obviously deficiency which we talked about or a health goal so I need to lose weight or I'm working harder at the gym and maybe I need to have a little bit more protein in my diet or I've had a bout of ill health and I therefore, I, I don't, I'm not getting the nutrients that I need. So kind of identifying um, what that is and what you're trying to achieve with a supplement. And then always my recommendation is start low and go slow. So take one at a time. Because people with supplements, they want bang for their buck. That's how I like to describe it. They're putting some money out and they want a result. Yeah, I feel so much better since I've taken X or since I've, you know, implied, um, I've uh, put X, Y into my, uh, uh, my, into my regimen. So um, people are keen to see that definite uh, thing. So go slow. Don't take too many because if you take too many all at once and then you start to not feel good, you don't know which bits are working and which bits aren't so yeah just build up the supplements gradually that would be best advice i think i'd like to add in there as well that 
treating <laughs> supplements the same way that you would treat potentially your diet. So, you know, for some people, they don't have an idea of really what nutrients they're getting from their diet in their first place. So as we mentioned in one of our previous videos, you shared um, the resource chronometer.com. So if you're, you know, if you tend to eat the same things every day, it's a good yeah. idea to go on to maybe chronometer.com and yeah. just get an idea of how much protein or how much calcium you're currently getting into your diet. And then you've got a good baseline there for what potentially, if you can't afford to go and get blood work or it's not easily available mm -hmm. because we know in this country that, you know, unless there's an issue, sometimes it's not easy to get that blood work done. Um, so at least you have some idea if, you know, you're getting certain nutrients or you're low in certain nutrients. I think that's yeah. probably the best place to start yeah. as well. Yeah, definitely. Like you said, um, the chronometer is not perfect and it does need a little bit of interpretation, but it does give you a sort of a generalized uh, area. And, you know, I've noticed with my diet and I'm not, um, I'm, I would say plant based and then I add in meat and fish and that kind of thing. And I noticed that even with my diet, sometimes my iron can be low on the chronometer. And that's something I really need to pay attention. So it's like, I know I need to take, pay attention to iron in my diet, for my health. And I notice when I use the chronometer, that quite often my RDA is low, even though I might have had some meat. Um, so it's amazing um, when, you, when you look at the chronometer and sometimes like calcium can be low or iodine or selenium, you know, um, and it's okay if it's low, it doesn't have to be perfect every single day. But like you say, generally people tend to eat the same things quite regularly. So that can mean, oh my God, actually I'm low most days and that's not good. Yeah. You know, um, good idea, it's good measurement, yeah. I think the other thing to remember as well is that, you know, sometimes we eat differently. If you work from home, for example, or if you're going into the office, you know, you've got a commute to take into consideration. On the weekends, people eat very differently. You may have had, you know, an injury or an illness that you're recovering from, or you're a pregnant woman or whatever it is. There's, you know, you can't, I mean, some people do eat the same way that they were eating 20 years ago or 10 years ago, and they've been through whatever since then. But a diet is something that I think for most people it's quite a comforting stable this is how I've always eaten so unless you make drastic changes um, obviously as you go through different ages like we know women who are between 18 to 50 for example need slightly more iron in their diets um, and they drop some once you hit 50 and it's very different to a man's needs as well so there's lots of different factors there but those all need to be considered. Yeah, exactly. So it's knowing your health history, knowing your diet, looking at something like the chronometer to give you a sort of rough idea, and then looking at if you are getting symptoms, what could that symptom be? And if you look at the chronometer and then you look at your symptom, you think, oh yeah, actually my thyroid is really bad, but my iodine levels are always low on the chronometer. Well, there could be a correlation there. So like you say, it's knowing um, so that you're, um, you're supplementing judiciously, really. So I guess based on that, um, people having really busy lifestyles is obviously, you know, there's, there's a lot of people that work during the week. They've got busy schedules on the weekends. Obviously needs change between working during the week, especially if you're commuting to an office, spending a long time commuting, and then weekends are very very different for a lot of people um, and I guess that even includes you know busy mums women who have just had babies and so one of the products that I really wanted to introduce into the range was um, our meal replacement so we've got those in vanilla and chocolate and they're not really meant to replace meals on a long-term basis I mean I myself I wanted to have these in the range because I it's really bad, but I don't eat breakfast and I pretty much never have done. Um, I know there's a lot of people that I've spoken to that don't intentionally try and skip meals. But for me, I can't eat first thing in the morning. So unless it's a weekend and we're talking, you know, 11, 12 o'clock brunch time, I can't do getting up at seven or whatever it is and having a meal straight away. 
So these are really only intended for somebody who wants to maybe up their calorie intake a little bit and introduce something else without doing what I used to do when I used to work as a chef a lot of the time until I started having more green smoothies and adding, you know, frozen bananas or avocados or things into those. I used to literally just live off cups of tea, which has got zero nutrient value whatsoever. Um, and so, you know, having, I think having something like this is probably a bit more beneficial than just living off cups of tea or coffee. So I'm not sure what your advice would be for that. I totally concur with what you're saying. I don't uh, think it's a good thing for a long-term strategy. I think it can be um, very beneficial at certain times. Let's face it, there's ideal and there's reality. <laughs> We're all are juggling that and it can change, can change a lot. So, you know, like you say, um, somebody that doesn't like breakfast, I know lots of people, I feel you know they can't stomach food in the morning um and that's okay if you're kind of intermittent fasting i guess but honestly if you need to have energy you need to get up because you know you've got a two-hour commute that can be very challenging on an empty stomach so you know depending what your energy requirements are sometimes you do need something but not something that's going to challenge your digestion um so that can that can really work at the beginning of the day and it can also kind of work at the end of the day because you have maybe some people have a good breakfast and they have a good lunch but they actually want to go to the gym you know seven eight o'clock in the evening when they've come and commuted back from work and you know they physically can't have a big meal before the gym and then sometimes it's two hours or an hour and a half at the gym they get back it's nine o'clock at night you don't want to have a heavy meal at nine o'clock at night but you need calories you need replenishment you need nutrition so again these can fit into um, a busy lifestyle or a mum that's been up all night breastfeeding with a crying baby and the last and she can't stomach food first thing in the morning because she's so exhausted. Mm. Then, you know, yeah. And I'm not I'm not mad keen on them for long-term weight loss. Um, but if you have been that person who has been addicted to refined carbohydrates, sugars and breads and pastas, um, if you want to reset <laughs> your palate, um, then you know just having a smoothie um with maybe a banana some blueberries um this can be very good at getting yourself back to a more baseline where you're you're happy with just some nice protein and vegetables and fruits and your palate becomes satisfied so i think yeah. it can be very useful in those circumstances i think i'd just like to say as well that so our the meal replacements that we have you can use them as a protein powder so they've got 18 grams of protein per serving, but they do also have vitamins, minerals. I mean, they're called a meal replacement because they are fortified with all those natural ingredients. Um, they don't have artificial colors, flavorings, sugars, all of those things. But again, that comes back to whoever you're buying these from is reading the labeling, making sure they don't have GMOs, you know, they are gluten-free, dairy-free, whatever your requirements are, is just checking the labeling and, you know, if it is a if it is a so-called meal replacement, checking exactly what that product is replacing in your diet. And if you're still, yeah. you know, if you add in a frozen banana or nut butter or whatever it is that you're adding to the meal replacement shake, it is upping your calories and it is giving you the nutrients that you need that a full meal won't be able to do if you're skipping that meal out. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, so like you say, I, I think... Um, with yours, Dee, they're around 90 calories, if I'm not right, before you add something into them. So either coconut milk or an almond milk or, or milk or and then yeah. banana and blueberries. So by the time you've done that, if you want to do that, because you want to up the calories, because um, you, know, you have missed a, a proper meal, um, that takes that up to a nice sort of calorie range. So yeah, it's very yeah. useful. Yeah, 90 calories, and I think they work out at 94 pence per serving. So they're still really affordable. I think, you know, some people have the misconception that a lot of supplements, protein powders are really expensive, but they're, they're still an affordable option as well. How many servings do, they, do you get in a... So one of these 300 gram pots is 16 servings. Um, yeah. For those. 
So, you know, if you're using that every single day, say you want to do a little reset and you're using it every single day, you know, that's just over two weeks, which I think is a good amount of time. If you, if you've been on holiday, you've been overindulging or whatever it is, and you want to give your body a little bit of a reset and not be having three big heavy meals a day, or you don't have time for that, it could be a good thing to do just on a short term basis. Definitely. Yes. I'm just not very keen at drinking my calories. So is there any way that you can use that supplement to actually create something else other than a drink? Yeah, definitely. So in the coming weeks, I'm going to be uploading a few different videos where you can use those meal replacement shakes in other ways. So things like a chocolate dessert, um, power balls, also chia seed puddings. Um, so other alternative products, even pancakes, protein pancakes, there's so many different things that you can add those powders into that doesn't have to be a drink or a smoothie or like a shake kind of style, definitely. Oh, wow, that's, that's good to know. So it has versatility, you know, people just think of it really, um, a lot of people just think of it as being a drink and that's it, don't they? So it's nice to have those alternate options. Yeah, definitely. So the other products that I wanted to talk a little bit about that we have in our range are also the hemp protein powder and the pea protein. So they're both completely vegan um, and also gluten free. So they're naturally gluten free. The hemp one is almost 14 grams of protein per serving and the pea protein is 18 grams of protein per serving. But the really important thing that I don't think some people realize is that when when companies use hemp protein powders or they use hemp in some of their products a lot of the time they use hexane which is a chemical to extract the nutrients from hemp um, so the really good thing with our hemp protein powder is that we don't use any chemicals so it's extracted using air and water and that's the process that's undertaken because obviously you don't want to be adding unnecessary chemicals and other things into the products that you're consuming so that's for both, both of those products, but obviously they have slightly different tastes and some people prefer one over the other. Um, but the other important thing is a lot of protein powders out there, um, I guess mostly dairy-based ones tend to have a bit of a bloating effect as well, which obviously isn't pleasant. And that, that doesn't happen if you're using something like this. So that's something that you can sidestep really. Yeah, sure. No, it's very uh, good to hear the, the purity, um, because obviously when you're extracting something from a seed, it's 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 a tiny little thing. So, and like you say, the hexanes, which a lot of people are unfamiliar with, um, can be found. Actually, they've been surveyed in a lot of supplements when they've been tested, and it's definitely not something that you're a bit like a toxic heavy metal or anything like that that you want to be ingesting so that's really really good to know that that you have that peace of mind with those two supplements and I mean personally speaking I'm not 100% anti-dairy but a lot of people have bloating and they notice when they cut down dairy gosh my stomach doesn't bloat anymore um, so it's good to have those those options those um, vegan options um, as a protein uh, source I think yeah and I think it's good to try different products and see if you're not if you're not familiar with either pea or hemp you know go online look into the benefits and one versus the other sometimes it just comes down to a flavor choice I mean yeah. to me they taste pretty similar and I just tend to alternate one to the other because I exercise every single day so I, especially being plant-based, I feel like I need that extra protein. I do have protein in every meal, but also because I'm exercising, I need that extra little bit. Um, and I just, I like both of them. So I tend to alternate one between the other every day. Yeah. And you made a, a very valid point there, dude, about, about being plant-based. Um, um, because obviously I advise um, people who want to do, have a vegan diet, a strictly vegan diet, and the challenge often with vegan diet is not that you can't get protein, because you can, we all know that from plant sources, but there's not always a complete protein in any one plant source, so in, in any bean or 
uh, any seed or so you need to be careful on how you learn about this and you make sure that at the meal you are obtaining complete protein source from i.e all of the amino acids yeah. um, so sometimes that can be quite a challenge in the learning curve for the people who are vegans and it's something that you have to make sure you are getting adequate protein and this can be a nice um, supplement if somebody's on a vegan diet um, just so they're going through that learning curve and they feel like or like you say you feel in your particular lifestyle and exercise that you need that little bit of top up um, taking a plant-based uh, protein yeah definitely and with these products as well there are other ingredients in there so there's a little bit of spirulina there's a little bit of acai berry obviously you just check the list of ingredients again um, we all have different protein requirements at different times of our life um, pregnancy when when we're older and we're losing muscle tone when we're exercising more and people don't realize under chronic stress um, because stress um, raises cortisol and we all know long term that's a very catabolic hormone and it breaks down it will sequester your protein in your muscles for glucose for energy so some people are going to the gym working away and they're super stressed then they go to the gym and they're super stressed at the gym and then they come back and they're like look, look at my muscles oh my god <laughs> nothing's happening at the gym and um and these people need so under stress you need like you need more vitamins under stress you need more protein under stress so that's why particularly in this video i would never give somebody a amount of protein they need it's based on their bmi it's based on their lifestyle and, and also um their health at that particular point so you know if you've just had surgery you may need a bit more protein you know all sorts of things um, play into your protein requirements yeah Heidi you mentioned um, at the beginning of the video that during your time uh, working as a chef you were so busy and you know you sometimes did use um, smoothies you'd make a sort of smoothie and use your bananas and blueberries and spinach and kale and things like that but then you would top up to make sure you've got your um, all your antioxidants and vitamins with actually a green powder um, and lots of people i know are very interested in the green powders so do you actually have anything like that in the range yeah we do actually and this is probably my favorite product just because of the history i have with green smoothies and how all that came about so and also it being you know the main reason why i started this whole range in the first place so our super mint powder is completely organic, um, it's dairy free, it's soy free, vegan as well. Um, it's a complete super blend, so there's 35 different foods and bioactive enzymes in there. So there's things like turmeric, there's various different mushrooms in that blend. Um, the recommended serving is 15 grams per serving. So it's perfect if you want to combine it with one of our protein powders and you do want a bit of extra greens in there. But I think for someone who, I mean, I love spirulina and wheatgrass and all of those things. And I found that they gave me lots of energy. So at that time when, you know, it was really hard to even sit down and have a meal, most of the time we'd pretty much just crouch on the floor and grab something. So for someone who wants to get those extra nutrients into, into their diet, 15 grams of this might be a little bit too much because it's an acquired taste. So if they do want to start off with just a teaspoon, which is five grams, I think that's a good way to go. You can slowly introduce that powder into your diet, get your taste buds used to it. I mean, the smell doesn't get to me, but I know for some people they really struggle with, if they, if they naturally, you know, there are some people that don't really like fruits and vegetables and we go on about the minimum being five a day, but some people just don't like eating them. So it is a really good way to try and get that nutrient into your diet. Um, but maybe just start off with a teaspoon of that if the, you know, the whole concept of it is too strong, the taste is a bit too much, I would recommend. Yeah, yeah it, it's, it's interesting as well, like you talk about palate and we've talked about that um, before, but people's palates do change. And um, it's amazing, you, for example, um, my husband was very, very, had such a sweet tooth. And um, then, due to certain factors, had to change his diet. 
And now if he eats sweet food, it's, it's, an, it's like, oh my goodness, that's too sweet. And I was like, babe, hey, you used to eat yeah. <laughs> four or five of them. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, and it's a bit like that with salt. If you notice, like some people who overuse salt, I'm not saying you, know, you should use salt, but not, you know, some people literally, it's like this, isn't it? <laughs> you yeah. see them in the restaurants. And when they first take or reduce salt, everything just tastes bland and tastes of nothing. And then the palate adjusts. So it's amazing with a green smoothie. Initially, you might think it tastes too earthy or irony or, you know, all of those things, but you build it up gradually and it's amazing. You, it's amazing what your palate adjusts to. Yeah, and we know that the body cells, is it 35 days that the, the you know, you have new cells that regrow and... And that kind of thing. So obviously your your taste buds are part of that where they will change over time depending on yeah. what they're what they're exposed to. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So like this, and that's why I always say start low with any, especially something like that, which is very concentrated. Start yeah. low, go slow, build up gradually. One thing I was really excited to do in the range um, was to see your vitamin c supplement because at the moment i mean it's certainly i'm i've upped my vitamin c um intake in terms of supplementation and limes and lemons and everything else so natural forms um and also up to my vitamin d because you know it's obvious what's going on at the moment that we need to make sure our immune system is bolstered as much as possible um, but unfortunately, my supplement is actually an ascorbic acid, which people don't realise is actually a chemical synthetic form of vitamin C. Um, and I was so excited to see that your supplement actually is the whole food form of vitamin C, which um, evidence seems to show that it's obviously it's going to be more absorbable and just beneficial because it's part of the, the um, all has all of the cofactors with it as well. So... Uh, um, yeah, maybe you can have a chat about that. Yeah, definitely. So in the supplement powder that we were just talking about, that um, has no man-made ascorbic acid. So the vitamin C is from food form berries in that yeah. supplement. Um, and there's also our vitamin C, which is basically a vitamin C. So that's also from food form. So that's from acerola cherry is yeah. where the vitamin C comes from and also blackberry extracts. Uh, so I think obviously, you know, I know we're talking about supplements here, but I think if you are taking supplements, whatever that supplement is giving you, it's really important that where possible, those ingredients are derived from a food form rather than a man-made ascorbic acid or whatever else it may be. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. It's just from my perspective, it's been quite challenging to find um, a vitamin C from a food source. If you actually look on the internet, very, very hard to find. So, um, and it's vitamin C as a supplement is not something that I take all the time because I do eat quite a lot of food sources of vitamin C. But definitely at the moment, we need to be maybe upping our intake a little bit more. And definitely to get it from a natural source is going to be more beneficial. So, yeah, I was really excited. Yeah. And definitely if you're increasing your iron as well, that's obviously very important for yeah, the absorption of iron too. Yeah, there are two reasons why you wouldn't want to up your uh, vitamin C levels. And one is if your iron levels are already too high. So very important to see that men quite often have very high iron, high ferritin. So at the moment, yes, we do need to increase uh, for immunity perhaps, but we don't want to um, in people who've got whose iron levels are too high, make them even higher because that's what iron does. It, it, sorry, vitamin C does. It makes you absorb your iron better. So for yeah. us girlies, most of us have got the opposite. We've got yeah. lower iron status, but it is something you need to um, be aware of when supplementing vitamin C. And the other thing is also to increase it to big doses. Just make sure you because it increases oxalate formation. And some okay. people are prone to kidney stones, um, that may not be beneficial for them. So just two caveats there with upping your vitamin C intake. Okay. So it'd be good to get your feedback on this, Zoe. We've also got two probiotics in the range. So we've got the Pro-B supplement, which has 4 billion live organisms per capsule. And that basically equates to eight tubs of natural yogurt per capsule. So you only need one a day. 
um, but it's the same as eating eight tubs of yogurt without all the potential added sugars or fillers or additives in those. And then the other product we have is the Pro-B++, which is 20 billion live organisms per capsule. And that's the equivalent of 40 tubs of natural yogurt. So it would be good to hear your feedback and thoughts on taking probiotics as part of your diet. Yeah, probiotics um, sometimes get a bit of a bad rap in the press. Um, there is some conflicting data on taking pro probiotic. Um, my basic premise is if you are using it, if your stomach is healthy, you haven't got any indigestion, um, signs of a, an infection or anything like that, um, and you're just thinking, I want to use probiotics to bolster my immune function, which seems to be very good evidence that it can do, because we all know that all these, whole, these bugs, microbes live within the gut, and they need to be, A, there needs to be enough of them, and they need to be in balance. So if you're using it for immune function, I think it can be really good. But just don't put a probiotic on the top of a gut dysfunction. So if you've got, and there's so many of them, you know, you may have a, you know, you might be having, you know, gut or bowel symptoms, let's say, you need to get those assessed by a doctor. Do you need to know, is there an infection? Is there a parasite? Um, have I got a bacteria? Have I got a viral infection in the stomach? Because if those things are not treated and sometimes they need to be treated medically, and then you go and put a probiotic, you're actually putting gasoline onto the fire. So this is, I think, where probiotics can get a bad rap. So make sure with your GP, you haven't got anything nasty going on. And then I think you're fairly safe to supplement with a probiotic. And I would say, again, start low, go slow. Mm -hmm. um, see your response. Now, the other thing that probiotics can do is they can elevate something called histamine. And um, some people have histamine intolerance. Quite a lot of people have histamine intolerance. So um, again, it's something to be aware of. So again, start with the lower dose, I would say, of your two supplements. Um, and then you can always increase if you have no side effects. You know you're yeah. okay with the probiotic. Um, it can be extremely useful if you've had a recent course of antibiotics. If you're a woman, you're, uh, so a lot of ladies are um, prone to uh, vaginal infection. Uh, so, and also weight loss, because we now realize, we talk about it a lot in my weight management program, that making sure the balance of the probiotics is really important. And quite often sometimes by getting that into balance, then if that's the cause of your weight gain, then um, just by improving your, your balance of flora in the gut can actually just dramatically drop weight without any need for other things that need to be looked at. So, and there's a brilliant book called The Microbiome Book, which, sorry, it's called The Microbiome Diet, which I highly recommend to people because it just shows by changing the microbes how that can drastically change your weight and your health and your, you know, your everything, your immune function, your hormones, your uh, and your weight so yeah i think it can be a very useful supplement but just use it carefully with our products that we have they have eight different live strains of bacteria so would yeah. you get something similar from a fermented food product would you still get that diversity you would get it from the fermented food plus the pre prebiotic so you would hopefully if you're if your diet was good and diverse and you had enough fermented products at uh, foods, you would have a good range of the microbes. Um, and I did notice some of them on your, and it's a nice range of them because I've seen some probiotics where I think they're very dangerous because they're literally just supplementing one strain of bacteria in a yeah. huge amount. Well, you have no clue whether your body's deficient in that particular strain. So what I like to see in a probiotic is, is, is a nice range of strains um so that you're not you know because otherwise you're guessing really aren't you you don't know what you're deficient in um, yeah. it's not like having a gut test and they go oh it's uh lactobacillus cassi that you're deficient in young lady yeah. <laughs> so this, this is a nice range and some of them um 
definitely are beneficial in your list with the weight loss. So there have been some that have been identified to um, maybe assist slightly in, in the weight loss issue. So, yeah. So Zoe, I'm interested to know, you mentioned earlier that people should just start with one supplement at a time, see how that goes, see how they get on with it, and if they need to make adjustments to go from there. So I'm interested to know which one you would pick out of the range of 15 supplements that we have. Gosh. Yeah, I would definitely go for the vitamin C at the moment. So based on need, my needs, we're talking very personal to me. Obviously, um, because of the need at the moment to increase immunity and having a really good source of that vitamin C. So although I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm a lime mint mojito, virgin mojito girl. So I'm having <laughs> lots of limes as well. But still, I'm still not getting a therapeutic dose of vitamin C. And because I know that I have low iron levels, low normal iron levels, it's absolutely fine, I know for me personally, to keep upping my vitamin C. There's no reason for me not to. Okay. So definitely that one. And I really love your liver formula. Now, you're gonna, everybody's going to say, it's my liver. Why would you concentrate on your liver? Um, but there's many, many reasons for them. First of all, yes, the liver one, yeah. Um, I really like the um, types of um, herbs and everything that's actually in that product because the liver loves really bitter things. So it's full, packed full of things like dandelion and chicory and all of those things that the liver really, really likes to, to uh, work efficiently. And people go, well, why would you pick the liver then? And, and I think that's because... I mean, all of our major organs are really important, but our liver has such a hard time. It literally detoxifies everything that we put down into our, into our system. It, everything has to go, whether it's a medication, a drug, or food, or whatever. Everything is processed through that poor little liver. Um, and particularly at my time of life now, coming up to the menopause, then my estrogen is a little bit high. And I want to make sure that estrogen is being detoxified correctly through the right pathways. And what I really liked about the formula that you have is that people don't realize there's two stages of liver detoxification when it comes to estrogen or hormones or anything else. Stage one, stage two. Stage one, a lot of people, you know, they start juicing and, you know, the greens and, and then they don't realize that actually that's only going through stage one of liver detoxification. You then have to go through stage two, and to do that, you need glutathione. Um, it's called conjugation. And there's choline in that liver formula, which is absolutely imperative to make sure you don't just go through stage one detoxification, you go stage two, through stage two, and then you can eliminate all the byproducts of um, all the toxins and everything else that the liver and hormones that the liver is releasing and it's not just you're not just recirculating um, so it's a really good thing to do you need to be careful when you detox do it slowly um, but I think just because of my time of life at the moment that is a really good one to take and also we know with the whole with um, the liver that it um, activates our fat burning hormones and it deactivates our fat storing hormones. So it has a massive part to play in, um, and also conversion of um, our thyroid hormone, which takes place in the liver. And, um, you know, our livers are, <laughs> are doing a lot. <laughs> and especially yeah, making my of life. Yeah. Um, and lots of ladies, I'm sure, um, coming up to the menopause who, um, maybe their liver is under more challenge than they um, they realise. I think so, I know. saw somewhere as well that the what you were saying about the liver having so much work to do, even just for the normal average person, yeah. the liver performs something like four to five hundred different functions. Absolutely, absolutely incredible, and um, it's such a clever organ because. If you are, you know, if you shove loads of toxins down it, it stores it right into the center of the liver. It, your body is so clever at trying to keep you alive and preserve you. Um, but it, you know, you think about what some people, you know, they drink too much alcohol maybe at the weekend and then they binge on 
fried food and then they take they wake up with a headache and they take a panadol and you know and that poor little liver is uh, having to uh, to do a lot and also when we're under stress we don't realize that all of that adrenaline that's you know overproduced in the body actually then the liver stores that adrenaline so that it's not con you know you're not getting panic attacks so yeah. you know so again or under stress then you need to work on your liver and even something i touched on in my previous video of the if you haven't watched it it's called the top five ingredients to avoid and even yeah. things like heavy metals so things that we're not completely aware of that we are actually ingesting every single day so heavy metals and certain ingredients like aluminium that you know is in quite a lot of beauty and grooming products that a lot of people aren't really aware of there's so many things that your, especially your liver and the kidneys, they, they hang on to all those ingredients. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, detoxification is, is a definite skill and it's something you need to do slowly. Make sure that you're not compromising your kidney function because, again, it has to come out of the liver. It has to go through the body somewhere because to eliminate from the body. Um, but also you find with a lot of people who are diabetic, um, particularly, you know, I'm talking type 2 diabetes, uh, diabetics here, if they improve their liver function, this automatically improves their type 2 diabetes because quite often it's type 2 diabetes due to damage of the liver beta cell, so, which can be recovered. So we, we know that now that we can actually recover from type 2 diabetes, but we need to work on our liver function. Yeah, it can be reversed. It can be reversed, yeah. So, yeah, so the, I really like the liver. Okay. <laughs> so Dee, I've said which are my favourite supplements. Um, soon as we're slightly uh, different age range and we may have different nutritional needs, just curious what your favourite supplements are from the range. Oh, okay. Um, I would say the organic mint complex is a really good one. Um, that's one that I take if I don't feel like adding the super mint green powder to a smoothie or I'm just kind of on the go and I still want to benefit from some of the ingredients in that product but without having to consume the powder so again that's a really good one I guess for anyone who wants to up their greens intake for the day but they really can't stomach ingesting the powder through a smoothie or through mixing it with coconut water or whatever it is so that's, that's a really good one. That's um, an iodine rich formula. So there's seaweed, there's spirulina, there's even ashwagandha in that one as well. Uh, but again, it's in a capsule form. So you don't have to deal with the whole, you know, if you really don't like green powders, that's a really good one to get in. If you, you know, maybe aren't hitting your five a day, that, that's yeah. a good supplement. Yeah, and the ashwagandha I take um, coming up to um, obviously you know perimenopause um, because it, it really has very good it has very good statistics as being a good adrenal support in general. Um, so anybody under stress, uh, ashwagandha is really good. Coming up to menopause, you know hormonal issues, um, it's, it's a great herb. I think ashwagandha. I think um, in terms of just the iodine to be a little bit cautious, most people in, in the UK, I would say, are lacking in iodine. Um, iodine used to be in our bread and they took that out. Um, it's in obviously some salts, um, but they took it out of our bread and they replaced it with something called bromine. And bromine actually stops the um, absorption of iodine. So I think on the whole, you tend to find that people are low in iodine and certainly if you look at iodine compared to like the Asian uh, population who eat lots of seaweeds, much more fish, um, they have a, a, a lower incidence of cancer generally speaking. Um, so iodine and it's needed by all of our glands and our breast tissue, it's very very important but there is a caveat obviously with iodine that people can be hypothyroid so they're high, iodine is probably the key nutrient for the thyroid um so most people's thyroids are generally running slightly low but there are people whose thyroid is running too high and they don't want to include any iodine in their diet and that's in men and women obviously men and women, yeah. exactly the same and i would also say that if somebody had autoimmune to be very 
I'm not saying iodine is going to make it worse, but to be cautious with an autoimmune because uh, and see if you don't want it to flare up. So again, just you know those two areas. Um, but yeah, most people are deficient in iodine, I would say. So yeah, I, I love my iodine. Um, so I guess in terms of some of my other favorite supplements, um, I guess it depends on what the what the need for supplementation is. So if you go through our range, we have a couple of um, quite interesting and unique ones. So we have a focus formula, which is formulated to help with mental performance and concentration. So that's got quite a unique blend of vitamin B12, which we know is really helpful for someone who's following either a vegan diet or a plant-based diet. That also has ginseng and curcumin and ashwagandha in that blend as well. So that's, that's quite a unique one that we have in our range. We've also got um, one that's called ashwagandha 360. So that again helps with mental performance and psychological function, but it also is known to assist with immunity as well and energy. So that would be, I'd say that and the other one, the focus one are more of a multi multi 360 kind of supplement. Another interesting one we have is the organic multi mushroom blend. So that's got five different types of organic mushrooms, including organic black pepper. So that helps against oxidative stress on cells, which is obviously um, incredibly important, especially if you're living quite a busy lifestyle, if you're around, you know, you're surrounded by toxins of various different degrees. So that's yeah. another one that also has organic vitamin C in that blend as well. Um, and a couple of the other ones to consider if you're looking for something that's, I guess, like mm -hmm. a multivitamin that will help if you want to start off with something that will help with various different things like hair and skin, nails potentially bone health and your overall energy. Two other good ones to look at would be the organic turmeric and black pepper blend. And then also our energy plus supplement as well. That's, that's another recommendation in there too. I'm so impressed uh, with the mushroom as well. Um, basically just because there has been pretty good research that it helps immune function, like you say, the oxidative stress. And when they looked at the Asian diet some time ago, and they were trying to pinpoint why there was a lower cancer rate, and they looked at the brassica vegetables, and they were like, well, yeah, they're really good. I think there's been some good evidence that you know they can be supportive. Um, they, were, they looked at things like garlic, leeks, you know, that family the Allison family and yes there's definitely benefits of those types of vegetables too but the one thing they pointed out was the mushroom it came top of the list I thought that was really interesting and like you say the reishi mushroom which is quite sought after um, yeah. I mean they're all good and they all have slightly different functions but the reishi mushroom has some interesting research behind it so it's exciting yeah. I think you know, I mean, at the moment I'm taking reishi mushroom, for example, because it's because of the need for an, a boosting a bit more in my immune function. So, yeah, definitely yeah. all the time, but definitely taking it at the moment. I think I think in um, in terms of ingredients like reishi mushroom and ashwagandha, I find them really interesting in terms of obviously they have a certain certain function in terms of potentially helping with immunity and energy. But obviously you can't go to a supermarket and just buy rishi mushrooms or ashwagandha here. You know, we live in the UK. It's not something that you can just buy off the shelf. And so I think it is worth considering that some of these ingredients have other potential or so potential benefits to our bodies um, than just generic fruits, vegetables that obviously form the majority of our diet. But again, that goes back to seeing your doctor, finding out exactly what your deficiencies may be and how some of those ingredients can help that. No, definitely, definitely. Yeah, ashwagandha, you know you've really heard of it a few years ago. It's actually uh, commonly called Indian ginseng. So it is a, of the ginseng family. 
Yeah. Um, and like I say, it, it seems to have what they call adaptogenic qualities. So it, it's, it's a balancer. It, it, it creates sort of homeostasis in the body, which is what we all want. So again, like I was saying, very good for adrenal support. Um, so handy for women during the menopause or people under stress working too hard <laughs> yeah. most of us these days yeah. yeah yeah so thank you so much Dee for allowing me to ask you some questions this time and go through your fantastic uh, supplement range and just very proud for you to launch launch that and I think there's just something for everybody I think we've discussed um, almost everybody needs supplementation in some area probably today um, and not only are they um, nicely sourced and um, there's been a lot of attention to detail paid to the manufacturer, but they also look really sexy on your shelf as well. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, I think they're, um, I mean, definitely if you travel a lot as well, I think having, having them flat pots rather than the traditional round pots was really important to us because as you can see, I've got three supplements in my hand there and they would take up considerably less space, whether it's on your shelf or whether you know you travel with them, they take up a lot less room. So it is a recyclable material, which was obviously also really important to try and be a bit more um, eco-conscious, I guess you could say. So that was definitely another part of designing and manufacturing, and, you know, the whole, the whole process of launching the supplements too. Thanks Zoe for joining me again. Thanks for your interest in our supplements and powders. And thanks again for all your questions and for helping the viewers just learn a little bit more about us and what we are offering and how it can help them in their diet and lifestyle as well. So you can shop all our supplements and powders on mintondemand.co. The same day dispatch when ordered before 12 noon and free delivery from 45 pounds upwards. If you'd like to get more nutritional information and guidance, you can also contact Zoe at zoe-holistichealth.com. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next time.